half hour webinar, so we can't wait around too long for the last people to arrive, but fortunately a recording will be available uh, for everyone to, to re-watch if uh, they so desire. So once again, this is Rod Bates and Ryan Welch with the Tally Team, and thank you very much for joining us on a, a webinar that has us pretty excited. Um, essentially, the really a deep dive into the Tally uh, to EC3 integration. So here's the agenda for the webinar, so you know what you're uh, signing up for here. We don't want any surprises. Uh, the, one of the key things that we want to do is, is understand what is the difference between these two platforms, Tally and EC3. Um, you know, they, they are both uh, operating within the world of embodied carbon, but uh, they go about it from, from different, different lenses, and they have really, they're different tools with slightly different functions, but they work well together. Uh, we also want to, of course, demonstrate the workflow. Um, and, and the benefits associated with that workflow. So why are we so excited about this? Um, well, I'm going to get into that. And then, of course, you know, show that workflow and as well as an explanation of some of the logic behind it. And that's why I brought in our special guest, Ryan, here. He was the, uh, the lead software developer from our side on um, creating that integration. So when it comes to technical questions, uh, you don't have to feel like you have to hold back. Uh, one of the things we always like about our webinars is we have a lot of great questions. Uh, we added a, a bit of time to the webinar to ensure that everyone was had uh, adequate time to formulate and ask their questions. So we're ready to answer them. We haven't been stumped yet, or maybe we have, but I just forgot it. Um, so without further ado, then, let's get into it. Okay. So essentially, Tally and EC3 are really tackling the same problem, and, and that's carbon, um, and, and body carbon associated with building materials, but we're coming at it from very different directions. And one of the things that when we first heard about EC3 from the Tally perspective is we were unsure if it was really supplanting Tally, but the more we learned about it, we realized that these two pieces of software actually work incredibly well together. So when we talk about Tally, what is it? What does it mean from the perspective of talking about the Tally tool and what it does to reduce embodied carbon? Well, the first thing is that Tally is a full life cycle assessment tool. And that means that it allows users to understand the impacts of materials from what we call cradle to grave, or essentially the point of material manufacturing all the way through to the end of that material's life where it's disposed of, recycled, what have you. And that's distinct um, from um, uh, EC3, because EC3, in fact, looks only at one component. In that case, it's manufacturing of the materials, and not necessarily that full life cycle. The other thing that's unique about Tally is that it has a database that is um, essentially um, completely captured within uh, and generated within a single ecosystem, and that being Gabby. And by virtue of that, it allows for essentially any material within Tally to be compared against another material in Tally, um, as long as it's serving sort of that, that same functional end goal. So you can compare a steel structure to a wood structure and things like that, even though they come from very different product categories that would have different product category rules. Um, the same would not apply if you had EPDs because there's different rules that are used to generate each EPD, uh, different assumptions that go into those rules, things like that. And as a result, it makes it very difficult to compare across material types. Um, but that's the benefit of a full LCA tool that uses a single process database in the case of Tally. Um, the other thing, of course, is that Tally can be used at all phases of design. So um, we want to make sure that... Um, Interesting. Um, we want to make sure that uh, people understand um, that Tally is something being virtue of integrated into Revit that you can use it at, at any um, any point in which you're using Revit. So if you're using Revit very early in design, you can run Tally. Um, in fact, we just had a meeting this morning reviewing some teams that were running Tally and Smack design. And of course, you can run it all the way through to you know construction documentation. Um, but because of that, um, it all means it only functions in the context of Revit, which is a pretty high hurdle. Not everyone's using Revit out there. So then if we were to look at it from a different perspective, um, 
what is EC3? Well, EC3 comes at it from a very different lens. And EC3 is a specification procurement and construction uh, phase tool. So that means that it's something that's really useful when it comes down to understanding specific products. Tally, by the nature of its database, has a handful of specific products, but the majority of them are generic, um, just sort of generic materials. Um, so it's glass, uh, not necessarily a specific glass manufacturer, although we do might have a, a handful of specific manufacturers. But EC3 is fantastic in that everything is a specific product. So that means when you look at data within EC3 and you say, well, I want that product, that you know you're getting that impact. So that there's a, a level of specificity that, that simply doesn't exist in the context of tallying what it does. The downside, though, is that it's really only looking at Module A because that's what you're going to find in an EPD. So it doesn't include maintenance and replacement. It doesn't include um, end of life. It doesn't include module D where you might see, say, uh, reuse and things like that. So as a result, um, it, you're looking at it from a sort of a particular lens. And not to say that module A isn't important. In fact, it's where the, the overwhelming majority of impacts typically occur. Um, but obviously, um, there's, there's other things that need to be taken into account. Um, you know, something that might have a great uh, module A profile as far as um, initial impacts may in fact require very frequent replacement, um, which may obviate some of the, the carbon reductions that you hope to achieve. So that's why it's often it's beneficial to look at the full life cycle picture as opposed to just that manufacturing impact. Um, the data within EC3 is sourced from EPDs. So uh, because of that, it's appropriate really for in-category comparisons, you know, concrete versus con other types of concrete, insulation against other types of insulation. Um, those EPDs, by virtue of those product category rules, make it difficult to look across different categories. So if you want to, say, compare a polished concrete floor with a uh, carpet tile, um, that will be a pretty tough comparison to do and really not appropriate for something like um, EC3. Um, but the great thing that from our perspective is that it offers this potential to take what you've done in tally um, and make sure that those global warming production performance objectives that you've defined in tally are really carried through and tied to a specific product. And this gets to one of the biggest issues that we've had um, with tally and why we're so excited. And, and specifically, it has to do with this graphic. I think for anyone that's seen a few tally webinars, you've probably seen this graphic. And, and I don't want to imply that this graphic was wishful thinking because this we really do believe and, and, and feel that this is what tally does. It allows you to run life cycle assessments throughout the entirety of the process. But the problem is that what happens after that? Um, how do you make sure that this is really what, what happens? And it's not um, the case that that tally run directly informs um, these specific products that are being selected. And there's a lot of opportunity for all of that great life cycle assessment uh, work and those carbon reductions to really go off the rails when it comes time to actually building a building, um, really when you hit that big question mark at the end. So what EC3 does is it really changes this paradigm and it puts in a happy ending uh, to the story. So if we look at the next slide here, we have a graphic essentially of what we see as this optimum workflow in the context of Tally and EC3. And what's interesting from our perspective is that you know it's not as if one supplants the other, but rather these two things work together. So Tally is one in which you know it's it's really because it's geared to Revit users, you know, it's going to be used by the design team more or less. And it takes you through all of those phases in which Revit is relevant. Um, that would be schematic design, design development, construction documentation. But then, of course, we hit that question mark. And that's where EC3 is, is so powerful um, because it allows for those materials that you've worked hard to select in tally by allowing for those cross-category comparisons. You know, you selected the right type of structure, the right type of flooring system, the right type of envelope. Well, now you can actually determine within those particular building systems what product is going to allow for you to hit those carbon reduction goals. And it, it really fills in that gap and allows for a degree of certainty um, that the end product is going to meet your objective. So you can take that bill of materials, essentially, that you've created and worked so hard to create in, in Tally, which is hyper accurate, and now export it into EC3. 
So that way you're able to take that hard work, all those different systems you defined, you push it into EC3 and can directly tie it to specific products. So from our perspective, it, it's like a, it really is the perfect handshake between these two pieces um, where it allows for a very easy mechanism to ensure that that LCA work continues all the way through. And we were really excited about this because prior to this, uh, if you wanted to go from tally to EC3, you're really looking at a manual process. And from our perspective, any friction within a process like this not only creates the opportunity for it not to be done, but also creates the opportunity for a lot of errors. Um, so this is a, a fantastic way of making it incredibly easy to perform um, an assessment within the context of EC3 if you're already using Tally. So we'll go to essentially now workflows. All right. Uh, thanks, Rod. So again, this is uh, Brian Welch, uh, member of the Tally development team. Uh, and in the following section, uh, we're going to look at uh, a little bit more in depth at how this tally to EC3 conversion works. Um, but before we dive uh, right into the uh, gory details, uh, we thought it would be helpful just to start off with a, a little video uh, for those that haven't had a chance to try out th this tally EC3 integration uh, to give you a sense of how this works within tally. So uh, we, we know well enough not to do a live demo, so yeah. here you go. <laughs> So uh, assuming that folks are already familiar uh, with Tally and, and the normal Tally workflows, uh, when you run a full building assessment, uh, as you normally would, and, and fill out all of the Tally definitions for your materials, uh, when you save out a report, now you will have this export to EC3 feature, which you see is still in beta. And that will allow you to log in to your EC3 account and just hit upload. Uh, and uh, you can see a, a progress report of how that model is uh, being converted into EC3. Uh, and when it's completed, uh, you will get a uh, link that will take you directly uh, to that report, uh, which then you can sort of peruse and, and start to see uh, how those uh, materials have mapped and how the uh, quantities uh, in EC3 have been generated. Now, of course, there's a lot of details in terms of how those mappings uh, get made. So in the following series of slides, uh, I'm going to sort of walk you through uh, how a particular material uh, in a tally model, in this case, a structural concrete uh, uh, with uh, three to four KSI structural strength and about 35% um, SCMs actually gets mapped uh, into EC3. Okay. So, um, in the conversion process, each supported tally material is converted into a particular EC3 material. So in this case, that rep is represented by a ready mix in the box below. And with that conversion, uh, the material will automatically be grouped according to EC3's uh, master format designation. So you'll, you see it here uh, in Division 3 under cast in place concrete and group together with all of the other instances of ready mix designs uh, in our project. Okay. Now, uh, really as a matter of convenience, we've chosen to utilize the tally material name verbatim as the element that is created uh, in EC3. Uh, we could really have named this anything we wanted to, but we thought it would be most helpful so that as you're going back and sort of queuing this process, uh, you're able to see how things have mapped from one to another. Now, it's important to note here that this entry in uh, EC3 is not just the instance of structural concrete in this particular floor system, but that's actually all of the instances of structural concrete, 3 to 4 KSI with 30 to 39% fly ash in your entire model. So that, that might actually pull from a variety of uh, floors, structural columns, uh, and so forth. Okay. Okay. So, um, and of course, the quantity represented here uh, is the cumulative amount of that particular tally material uh, across all Revit families in which it occurs. Um, but it's important to note here that the units actually differ between EC3 and Tally. Uh, if you're familiar with Tally, you'll know that 
we use kilograms uh, exclusively for all of our materials, uh, whereas EC3 uh, have, have units that uh, vary depending upon the industry conventions uh, of each product category. Um, so while steel might be represented in tonnage, uh, concrete is represented here in cubic meters uh, and you'll, you'll likely find that other materials like sheet goods might be represented in thousands of square feet. Um, so in all of these cases, uh, the conversion process between tally and EC3 uh, uses uh, all of the dimensional information that's available to tally uh, along with the declared units in EC3 to uh, do that uh, conversion for you automatically. So another key difference between how materials are defined in tally and EC3 uh, is uh, related to their performance criteria. So as you see in the upper left window, uh, tally uh, contains all of the performance criteria of this uh, particular concrete mix design in its name. That, that's its com compressive strength and SCM content. EC3, on the other hand, uh, uses performance criteria as search terms to filter the range of applicable EPDs. So in order to handle this difference and not lose that specificity, uh, the conversion process also takes any relevant performance criteria that's known about each tally material uh, and applies it as search terms so that you don't have to. And of course, since the element uh, in EC3 is named according to that level of specificity, it's very easy to just compare the uh, element column and the material column uh, to ensure that, that those uh, search terms have been applied appropriately. Uh, and just to give you one very quick example of, of another material, uh, this is a steel reinforcing rod or rebar uh, in that same uh, Revit family. Uh, and of course, this is grouped uh, also within uh, division, division three, uh, but under a different subassembly. Uh, in EC3, uh, and of course here the, the quantity is represented in steel tonnage. Uh, now, this number does not match the number shown here in tally because of course uh, there's steel reinforcing rod in a, a whole variety of, of Revit families uh, throughout the project. Okay. So um, there's a, a lot of detail here and you may be wondering how you can go through this process for essentially all of these mappings. Uh, well, fortunately, uh, a fairly newly released uh, feature uh, in EC3 is uh, the ability to export a tally report as a CSV. Uh, so if you're in your master format tab in EC3 and you see that button, uh, you can just click on it and that will uh, download a CSV for you uh, that is uh, very detailed. Uh, th this is uh, one we did for a project uh, that completed uh, SD, and there's roughly, I think, 600 lines in here. So this is taking you through every tally material in every Revit family and showing exactly how that conversion was made. Uh, it shows the tally mass, uh, the tally quantity converted into EC3 units, and then, of course, the EC3 declared unit. Uh, and then just uh, for illustration purposes, I've also included here a, a pivot table uh, generated uh, from this same report uh, that just shows the, the range of uh, materials that, that appear in this particular model and gives you a sense of the, the, the degree of coverage of uh, current tally materials in EC3. Uh, so in, in this model, you can see uh, you know, roughly half of the materials are presently supported, uh, but these constitute the large uh, majority of uh, mass and, and correspondingly uh, uh, carbon footprint uh, for this project. Um, so at present, uh, EC3 supports a little over 300 of tallies, roughly 600 materials uh, in our database. Uh, and while that might sound like a lot, um, in our experience, it, it really does represent uh, the, the most significant materials uh, by mass and by carbon footprint. Uh, so we have uh, nearly 100% coverage uh, in divisions three and five, so uh, steel and concrete, um, as well as excellent coverage of lumber, sheet goods, uh, engineered wood products, uh, very good coverage of building envelope products, uh, including glazing, curtain wall, doors and insulation, 
Uh, and then many uh, common interior finishes uh, for floors uh, and ceilings. Uh, and that, that list will only continue to grow as uh, uh, EC3 gains maturity and as more EPDs uh, become uh, available from uh, various uh, manufacturers and various product categories. Okay, so I think that gives us. Sorry about that. Oh, I'm not sure why we're getting. Okay, uh, apologize for that. We, we just got an echo on the phone, so we're switching to computer audio, and hopefully that works for everyone. We, uh, we react and adapt, and I guess that's what you have to do. You've got to stay loose um, and move fast. So we're going to go and touch on some of the uh, tally resources um, that are available. Uh, the first thing is you really, if you haven't done so already, is make sure that you register to access the EC3 tool. Um, it's free, um, and it's obviously very easy to do. You just register. But that's, of course, required to make use of this workflow. Um, the other thing is that you can download a free trial of Tally or make sure you have the latest version. Um, the trial version of Tally um, works uh, for this particular functionality with EC3. Um, so the great thing about that, too, of course, is it means that uh, not that we don't uh, not want to sell more copies of Tally, but you have to be working with, like, say, a, a construction firm that doesn't have tally, um, you know, they can just use the trial version to export that particular bill of materials if they're the ones that are responsible for reviewing this in the context of EC3. Um, you know, they, they don't have to buy tally to be able to do that. So this is something that can be done incredibly quickly uh, with an existing tally model if they happen to have access to. And then also, of course, I want to point people to the EC3 forum. Um, if you go to the EC3 website, you'll see a link to that as well, and I've included it here. If you feel like uh, somehow copying that down, perhaps it might be a little bit tough to do through a webinar, but um, it's actually it's a, a vibrant forum. Questions are posted. They're quickly answered. Um, and in fact, someone there was asking about Vitaly, the EC3 workflow. And I said, well, shoot, we better do a webinar. So there you go. Um, you, know, you ask and you receive. So I guess that's what forums are all about. Um, so it's a, obviously there's a lot of resources out there. And, of course, you can always consider the Tally team a resource as well. Um, we always want to make sure that people get the most out of our software. So if you do have questions, you can feel free to contact us as well. Um, so we're, of course, going to be getting into some questions, uh, just as we always do. But once again, a reminder that recordings will be posted uh, on our website. And also that we have another webinar coming up that's focusing on uh, carbon reduction strategies as it relates to concrete. And we're bringing in an outside expert from a structural engineering firm that has done some pretty remarkable things, I have to say, um, as far as reducing the embodied carbon of concrete. Uh, we've been very impressed by their work um, for a number of years and, and some of the things that they've done to really push Tally well beyond um, anything that we could have imagined uh, has, has impressed us greatly. So. Uh, we're happy to have them join us on the 13th, and that will be a pretty fantastic webinar. I'm also um, right now in the planning phases for another one that will look at structural steel. Um, we don't have a date for that yet, but uh, that's one of the challenges we've always found is reducing the embodied carbon of steel. What do you do? What are the good strategies? And, and frankly, we're at a bit of a loss. So we reached out to some experts, and uh, it sounds like we might have some folks from the uh, SE 2050 group coming in to lend some wisdom. So. Um, with that, I'm going to open up the floor to some questions, and uh, hopefully people have some zingers for us. So let's see what we got, Ryan. Okay. Well, we had some people asking to turn off the background music. I'm sorry, that must be a go-to uh, webinar thing, so we'll make sure that doesn't happen again, or, or if I can't figure it out, maybe it will. Um, let's see what we have here. Okay. Let's see, Ryan, can you read that question there? Uh, okay. 
Uh, okay, so bear with us as we read through these questions here. Uh, we have one here that's actually about how often is e three EC three data updated, and actually that's something that we don't actually know. It, it really is dependent upon the manufacturer's EPD. Every EPD has an expiration date associated with it. So when it comes to the EC three data, you know it's a continually growing database, um, and that the uh, basically the longevity of the data within there, a particular data point, is going to be dependent upon that EPD. So um, if there's data that you want to see in that EC3 database, it's really uh, behooves you to contact uh, the manufacturer, ask them to get it in. It's a quite an easy process. EC3 has made it very streamlined. Um, that information will be in there. So uh, essentially, I guess it's updated as frequently as uh, new data becomes available. Okay. And uh, let's see. Um, Someone asked if there's a forum for tally users. You know, that's a great question. It's something that we've debated a long time. Um, you know, there's a lot of places where tally use is discussed, um, but not necessarily in a forum. I would definitely encourage anyone to use the um, Embodied Carbon Network, the ECN, as a place to post general tally questions. Um, but um, I, I would always say, feel free to contact us, the tally team, at support at choosetally.com. Um, we work pretty hard to get back to everyone in short order, and uh, we don't have too many unsatisfied customers. I think There's probably a couple out there, and I apologize, but uh, we're pretty good. But I think there really is something to be said about putting that information out in a public place, and I would rec I'd probably recommend the Embodied Carbon Network. Uh, there's a, a question here about uh, is there a potential that uh, there's a material that's missed in translation uh, between Tally and EC3? Um, so... Um, so uh, in this case, uh, the uh, best source of information for this is going to be that um, uh, CSV report that you can download. That will take you through uh, every single uh, tally material in your model on how it is interpreted in EC3. Uh, and there is a column there uh, to note whether it is uh, supported and if so, uh, how it has been mapped into EC3. Uh, that'll also allow you to compare quantities. So if there's any uh, discrepancy between uh, the mass represented in tally and the uh, volume or area represented in EC3, that's where you'll be able to find that information. Uh, let's see. Um, we have a, another question about um, when I mentioned in tally, why is it uh, capable of comparing across different uh, product categories? Um, you know, obviously, you do want to make sure that you're comparing something that's, say, performing the same functional purpose, uh, but that's, you know, from an LCA perspective. But it does allow you to compare across things that actually come from different product category rules. So I think I mentioned a flooring example of, say, carpet versus polished concrete. You know, there's going to be very different product category rules for those two things, but the virtue of Tally by having a single database uh, produced by a single software by a single entity using the same um, assumptions um, allows for those types of comparisons and, and similarly say a, a wood versus steel structure or something like that where there's very different um, information that goes into generating um, the, the background data but um, so if you were to compare EPDs they could be wildly divergent but they wouldn't be in the context of tally. Uh, let's see um, Someone asked, uh, they understand that EC3 is a free tool, which it is, and I think that's absolutely fantastic. Um, is Tally free as well? Uh, the trial is free, um, so, and it's fully featured, but the, the software itself is not. Um, I will say that we, we do charge, I like to think, a fairly modest price of 700 or 695 US dollars for an annual floating license, and that comes with full technical support and things like that. But also there's a free trial, and we have tons of people that use uh, the trial. And we also offer uh, free educational licenses as well. So if you're conducting, say, research or what have you. Um, but we can certainly appreciate the, the benefit of seeing something like Tally um, being equally free to EC3, but we do need to uh, pay for development RN, sadly. Um, but uh, if someone has so many ideas and we can do about that, um, we're, we're always happy to talk. Um, let's see. Um, we have, uh, what is possible, let's see, uh, um, how many firms you estimate are using Tally and EC3 regularly? 
Um, you know, we actually, uh, we just keep track overall of, of activations from the tally perspective. We try to be pretty hands off when it comes to collecting data. I think it's something that we've always felt that the privacy of our users is important. Um, so we could provide, maybe we have some good sense of how broadly it's used within the industry. And I'd certainly say if you're using Revit and you're doing an LCA, um, there's a good chance you're using Tally, particularly in North America. Um, but as far as EC3 adoption, you know, I, I would have to let the EC3 folks chime in. But I will say also that this is one of the most well-attended and well-registered webinars that we've ever had. So. If that says anything about um, EC3 adoption, I think it's pretty significant. And from our perspective, it's a real game changer. So um, we expect this to, to really be um, absolutely on the forefront of making LCA a, a standard practice in the context of all buildings that are being constructed. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, let's see, we have EC3. Do you wanna answer that one from uh, Jesse? Uh, I said, I see that. Sorry, Brooke. Okay, um, there we go. Okay, so there's a question about how linked models are interpreted by EC3 and uh, overlapping elements uh, such as slabs that may appear in both structural uh, and uh, architectural Revit files. So um, uh, it, essentially, uh, they're interpreted in EC3 in exactly the same way that they're interpreted in Tally. So if you have a linked Revit file, when you save out a report, uh, any uh, Tally definitions that appear in that linked Revit file will uh, be included as part of the impacts represented in the report. And likewise, when you upload a model uh, to EC3, all of those materials uh, uh, within your linked uh, structural files uh, will also be included uh, in that assessment. But um, so with regard to elements that may be duplicates, uh, this is something that, that routinely, um, you know, we have to track in our office as we um, uh, work with a lot of structural engineers who also uh, use Tally uh, for their models. Uh, and generally the way we handle that is uh, if our linked structural model contains uh, Tally information, and we pull that into uh, to our linked model, uh, then we would typically put our duplicate structural elements on a work set that we could exclude from the scope of a whole building assessment so that we're not essentially double counting all of that steel and concrete. Uh, sometimes it happens that uh, our structural models uh, will uh, leave off a, a finished flooring material or a concrete topping slab. Uh, and in those cases, uh, we would simply um, assign that one material in our architectural model and leave the rest of uh, the assignments to the structural model. Oh, let's see how to do that. Um, how do you perceive the contractor's role to be in using Tally and EC3? So uh, from our perspective, I think one of the key things here is that oftentimes the contractor is responsible for actually purchasing Know, the, the actual materials themselves that are going to go into constructing that building. So we really see is EC3 as the mechanism by which the intent of that tally run um, and sort of the, the generic systems could then through EC3 um, at the hands of the, uh, the contractor be actually tied to specific products. And something that we'd be really excited to hear about from people, whether it be in the EC3 forum or maybe to us directly and we can propagate, but is um, when people start using um, EC3 as a mechanism to write a embodied carbon performance specification. Um, we think that that can easily be done given that EC3 provides sort of, you know, a, a benchmark figure within each category. Um, and so from our perspective, that would probably be the perfect mechanism to do that. Um, so we, we definitely see a big role um, for them because they're, they, you know, the contractor is the one that's you know, actually putting the stuff in the building and putting it all together. So. Um, and in plenty of our own projects here at Karen Timberlake, we've seen situations in which substitutions for materials that we have defined within the context of a tally run have been proposed that would potentially undermine the um, embodied carbon reduction targets that we've established. So we see that as, as a really a great mechanism of, of maintaining that fidelity of intent.
Uh, we have there, it says, whose responsibility is it to find, upload, and recommend missing EPDs to EC3? Um, you know, the uploading of EPDs and things like that really happens um, on the part of the manufacturer is my understanding, but when it comes to recommending ones and things like that, you know, I would definitely post that to the forum. Um, that's uh, a forum that is actively monitored by the full EC3 team, including the management team, and they're definitely uh, looking for that type of feedback. From their perspective, the more manufacturer engagement, the better. Um, and obviously, the, the more materials that are in there, the, the more likely we're going to start seeing buildings begin to draw down their impacts and really begin to see a, an embodied carbon reduction pushed up the supply chain. Uh, let's see. Um, So there's interesting, there's a question about comparing buildings. So one of the challenges, Ryan, and maybe you can speak to this, is that every time you push a bill of materials from Tally into EC3, it creates a new project. That's correct. Is there a way in which um, people can essentially allow for, um, say, a comparison or a combination of that data with another project at this time? Mm -hmm. Uh, the, I think that's probably a question for the, the folks at EC3. I, I don't know of one at the moment, but uh, it's something that, that we've certainly discussed as a uh, potential future uh, feature. Yeah, I could definitely see the challenge if you end up with a bunch of projects that you, you push to and you want to be able to combine these. Um, so noted here they had an issue of units not carrying over between Tally and EC3, and EC3 not allowing them to sign units correctly. Um, I'm curious, so like maybe we should check the forum then to see what the nature is. Obviously, you noted that the units do change. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm curious, maybe uh, it would probably be worthwhile for us to look and see what the source of that issue is. But you noted not only are the units going to be transferred, they're going to be different from tally to EC3, but also um, when you look at a particular tally entry, that's not going to reflect what you see in EC3 because the EC3 data is going to reflect aggregation of all of that particular material. Yeah, so... so uh to, to help us diagnose the, the source of that issue, there are probably a, a handful of uh, resources that, that would really help. So one being, when you save out a tally report, uh, that Excel file uh, that it contains all of the, the pivot tables showing us uh, showing the various uh, views of the data, it's going to be really helpful so that we can isolate uh, that particular material and really limit it to the um, uh, product stage, essentially A A1 through A A5. Uh, and then uh, we could also look to that um, downloaded uh, Tally EC3 conversion report, uh, which would tell us exactly what the uh, the mass that uh, EC3 received from Tally was, uh, as well as what the uh, converted uh, quantity and units were uh, in EC3. So that those few pieces of information would be really helpful to us. Uh, and you can certainly um, include that in an email to uh, support at choosetally.com, uh, and uh, you know we can uh, contact our uh, our friends over at EC3 uh, to diagnose it if, if we do see that there's uh, an issue there with the conversion. Uh, there's a great question about wood um, in here, and particularly about um, the availability of FSC wood in the context of tally, and, and what does that mean from body carbon savings uh, when you're evaluating various strategies. You know, that's actually a really great point. Um, uh, it's one of the challenges that we found is, you know, making sure that FSC wood and, and the, the method in which that wood is extracted and, and uh, has a huge impact on embodied carbon. Um, there's no doubt about that, and, and the research is quite compelling there. Um, the data that we have available is the data that's been produced by the American Wood Council. Um, I think we would be open to more options um, if they are available for us to, uh, to incorporate. But one of the things should be noted that the nature of the product category rules currently for wood wouldn't necessarily account for that variation in harvesting practices that really comes from, like, say, uh, carbon soil sequestration and things like that, um, or yeah, soil carbon sequestration, rather, um, things like that. So that's one of the, the challenges there, and I think that that is something that that industry is grappling with right now. Um, it's contentious, to say the least. Um, and it's something where one of the things that we would encourage, we have methods, uh, I think, to account for the variation of body carbon between um, harvesting practices. And I would definitely encourage anyone with those kind of questions to contact us directly and we can walk you through some of the things that we recommend and, and our users have already implemented. Uh, 
Uh, let's see, what do you have uh, relevant to Canadian? Um, so someone asked about the tally in EC3 database relevant to Canadian industry as well. So the data within tally, um, including say transportation distances, all that kind of stuff, it's supposed to reflect a North American average. So it will be relevant absolutely to Canada. Um, as far as the EC3 data, um, you know, the EPDs are ones also that are relevant to North America, uh, I would assume in most cases. Um, I would definitely, something that you, just to confirm, I would uh, defer to the EC3, um, unless Ryan, you happen to have now. Yeah, we, we don't want to speak uh, too confidently on that. We can only speak confidently in regards to tally, but that is a perfect example of what the uh, EC3 forum is for. Um, let's see, uh, can you adjust the parameters, the sliders to put out another report um, and not a separate project? Um, okay, so that's an interesting point. It looks like someone actually just noted that in the context of EC3, you know, you don't, once you've pushed that bill of materials, you can manipulate it within the context of EC3 and understand variations and impact. Um, so you know, that's one of the great things about the tally run is it's done. Um, you, know, you, you picked your systems, things like that. That bill of materials isn't necessarily going to change. It really comes down to variations in products. So if you want to manipulate that same data set that you've exported into EC3, that doesn't require an additional product or project. And that, that's a great point of clarification. Um, that can, of course, be manipulated as you see fit in the context of EC3. Um, Let's see, someone asks, does Tally look at industry average EPDs the same lens, uh, the burden of doubt, which penalizes global warming potential um, given the uncertainty? Um, so we definitely do take industry average EPDs. Um, they are reprocessed um, in the context uh, by our uh, data partner, ThinkStep. Um, we can provide full documentation on their methodology for running that um, we basically rerunning that model um, so that it fits with the rest of the tally data set. Um, and we can provide that to you if you're curious a particular entry. Typically there's a link um, within the context of every tally export uh, output report that has that in the appendix. But um, sometimes those links can be, or it'll just have a citation, it's a little obscure. And we oftentimes help users track that data down. Uh, here's just a, a helpful tip, uh, not exactly a question, but it's worth mentioning. Uh, for folks that have specific uh, EC3 data questions, such as, is this particular EPD in the database? Uh, those folks can email clfdataec3 at uw.edu. That's a, yeah, I wish we had a way of posting that one. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe we'll put that in the chat or something so people can see that. That is pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, so Ryan, it looks like we have a, a question regarding um, Okay. Okay. So the question, I, I'll just repeat it. Uh, one issue is curtain wall transfer. I often use mullions and glazing and tally, but EC3 didn't uh, as of a couple of weeks ago uh, have a good way to map the mullions. Uh, it may have been updated. I, I think you, you might be right on that account. I'll, I'll have to double check. I know there's uh, good coverage on uh, glazing systems and on curtain wall systems in general. But uh, mullions in isolation, uh, I'm, I'm not sure uh, as of the initial beta release if that was uh, compatible. Um, but again, that's uh, I think a really good comment to include in the, uh, in the forum. We have that data in tally, so it's really just a question of um, whether the, the EPDs are available in EC3, uh, and if so, you know, prioritizing uh, that, um, that conversion. Yes, um, and then someone asked about that that pivot table, you know, that ability to compare um, in that, that sort of the, the pivot table, and that's actually, there's pivot tables already in your tally export. But that's right, so so tally, when you save out a report, in addition to that uh, you know, formatted PDF, uh, you also get uh, an Excel file uh, that essentially has all of the raw data um, broken out by Revit family, Revit material, tally material, uh, life cycle stage, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then that is reformatted uh, into a variety of uh, views through uh, pivot tables. Uh, the example of the pivot table that I showed earlier in the presentation uh, that was just one that I did uh, kind of off the cuff uh, for that uh, tally to EC3 uh, mapping. 
uh, really just to illustrate the, the um, degree of uh, coverage of um, tally materials in EC3. Uh, so you know, potentially, if that's a feature that, that folks would like, um, we could you know, potentially put together a, a template for, for making that uh, process a little bit more straightforward. Well, there you go. Let us know and we'll make it happen. How's that? Okay. Um, well, I think, you know, we probably missed a few questions because there was a, a ton of them coming in and, and Ryan and I are squinting at the big screen trying to make sure we read all of them here. But um, I, I really want to thank everyone for their attention. And if there are any questions that we didn't uh, address, um, you can absolutely reach out to us directly um, at the Tally team and um, we'll be able to to uh, respond to you directly. Um, and also, I want to make sure that all of you are uh, able to join us for the next webinar. But uh, here's uh, the contact information. Um, you know, if you're looking for um, our lead guide, which is pretty slick, we have one for uh, 4.1 um, as well as 4.0. Um, if you're looking for, say, potential resources, trying to understand materials, um, you have that question about how do you account for the difference in FSC versus non-FSC wood when you know, that type of consideration isn't factored into um, the typical LCA. You know, things like that, you just want to talk carbon, um, give us a call. Or more specifically, you get to talk to me. So maybe that'll, that'll cut down the numbers. Um, but I always make sure that uh, the questions get answered and I can tap into the full resources of the tally team. So thank you very much. Um, go out there, save some carbon, and uh, register for EC3 and download tally. All right, take care, everyone.